Hey everybody, Wayne here. How's everyone doing today? Welcome, welcome. Oh, looks like we've got some people in here who are already waiting. Love to see that, love to see that. Excuse me while I bring my notes up. I uh, did a quick workout and then uh, showered and then I looked at the time and I said, it's it's showtime. Showtime, baby. I got to get over here. So how's everyone doing? Charles, good morning. Good morning, good morning, or good afternoon, or good evening, but not good night yet. Um, Christopher, Daniel, great to see you. Good afternoon, everyone. Big hug from the sunny Spain. It's pretty nice out today. I think we're going to get some rain later here. Um, 70s and sunny. Should be about 80 and sunny here. Um, it's uh, the Ozarks spring turning into summer, right? So it's... Uh, it's hot. It's starting to get a little humid. It's it's still nice most of the time, though, for now. Sunny here in Ottawa, Canada. Awesome. Awesome to hear. Auto correct. Great chat lives at this time. It's 7 p.m. Not late for me in Spain. Hope that, Wayne, you keep this time for the national viewers for the future. Um, that is my plan, Daniel. Definitely. So, um, you know, there's a lot of different wargaming shows at this point um, throughout the week. I believe I'm the only one on Sunday. Uh, and then the only one that I, th I can think of that starts earlier, right? So it's 1,200 hours, noon, where I am, central um, in the United States. So I figured that way, you know, I mean, it's a little early West Coast. I know some of my West Coast viewers may be a little harder to tune in. And some people, I think, in general on Sunday, I know people are busy. Sunday is a lot of times family day. But there's no other shows on Sunday. And I, I knew that, you know, if I said it at noon – that a lot of people would be able um, that are international, like you said, people that are overseas, right? So not just the Canadians watching, which there's definitely a few of you, um, but then everyone who's over in Europe um, and elsewhere, it may work for you guys. So definitely going to try to keep it at um, Sunday at noon should be my show going forward. Um, if we have to do special ones, whatever, we'll do that. I'm trying to, trying to get a special show going with um, Robert of Kilroy was here. Um, and he's been super busy lately, so this isn't on him at all, but to cover the Charlies, um, he, uh, the Charles S. Robert Awards for this year, voting it continues through the end of June. So you have a few weeks left, almost a full month left, so plenty of time. James, good afternoon from Southern Ontario. Like I said, got some Canadian viewers. I love it. Oh, that's pretty good. Rockstar Pier Zero. No lectures on whether energy drinks are good for you or not. I like them. Compass News. Oh, is that what they use? Is that what they use, Christopher? I don't. I don't often watch their show. Um, I mean, I'll, I'll tune in usually. Like I'll see it pop up. Um, but generally speaking, Thursday nights I'm off work. My wife's off work, so it's spend time with the wife time, and which I love. Love my wife. Love spending time with her. So I don't usually spend a whole lot of time on wargaming in general. Um, maybe I'll do some more gaming during the day. She'll be busy with stuff. I'll, you know, sneak in some more gaming, maybe make a video, but I don't usually watch, um, my own stuff like that would be Thursday night or Friday generally. B cafe. Hey there. Um, who I used to, when I first saw your name, I thought it was beefcake and I was like, hmm, cool. So beat cafe, beefcake. What's the origin of uh beat cafe? Hmm. Vince from Japan. Wow, I did not realize that. Hey, Kirk, nice to see you. Nice to see everybody. Let me tune in. I'm working my way through the comments. I don't want to get everyone's comment up here, but I, I want to talk to you guys. Right, We're having a conversation. We're saying hi. Um, you know, not introductions per se, but just saying hi. Saying good afternoon, good evening, you know, wherever you happen to be. 31 here, rainy season, humid for the next few weeks. Ooh. 31 uh, Celsius, I hope. Retire from out here in Southern California. Bill, I'm sure it is. I'm sure it is. Is it, is it always a great time in Southern California? Except for maybe gas prices. There we go. Yep, from Luxembourg, gear up. Perfect timing for me. Love to hear it. Love to hear it. And that's what that's what we want, right? There's a lot of evening shows, evening in America shows right now. Let's get, you know, let's get a afternoonish, well, evening for you guys. Which, if it's evening in America, what's it going to be? 
middle of the night for you guys. Eh, you know, let's get one. Let's get a show that we can have as broad of a group as possible. Again, I know some of you West Coast guys, it may be a little harder. This because what would that be now? Ten in the morning, um, which I mean isn't that early or anything, but you know, maybe doing morning errands, morning chores, whatever. Ken, howdy. Hello from Rainy Ireland. Hello. Glad to see you. There's a YouTube countdown. Um, so I use, um, so talking about the, uh, the countdown, it's through StreamYard. And so I assume then that's what Compa Compass uses. So I use StreamYard. Um, I use the professional or whatever it is, the pro one, which is 50 bucks a month, which is a lot of money, but it's worth it. You know, I can make videos at 1080p. Um, my camera won't even do 4K. So, you know, my recording camera I've switched. I've started doing 4K on my videos, which hopefully some of you guys have noticed. Um, but for um, on YouTube here, my uh, webcam just does 1080p. But it's StreamYard has some built-in countdown timers, things like that. And that's one of them. Well, that is the one I've used. But if Compass uses it, I may switch. Um, I don't want to copy them. So... Perfect life, busy with new job, with time for wargaming and watching Wayne's videos. New job, huh, Daniel? What's uh? I don't want to. I don't want to pry. What's the new job? I mean, anything you want to share? Glad to have it. Switch into something you want to do, or just make more money, or I mean, we all got bills to pay, right? Another from Ontario here. Okay, that. Okay, we got. That's a. That's a. Maybe that's a, a limit on the amount of Canadians we need. Okay, guys, I'm just kidding. Morning, Tim, right? It's Tim, right? I know you got Tom Loy is your screen name, but your name is Tim. Am I right? Hopefully I'm right. I feel bad if I'm not. Tell me. Morning. Just got back yesterday from a week in Springfield. Springfield, Missouri? Hope it was a good week. Work week? Something going on? Or Oh, no, wait. You retired, didn't you? Sorry, I haven't played that. Um, you know, I used to do a lot of... Um, multiplayer gaming with um ameritrash style so scythe right um i loved like but this was a while back this is really before i moved down to missouri so when i lived in minnesota um and i did a lot of a lot of gaming but I, this is also before i discovered war gaming that's probably why i discovered war gaming was because you know especially sort of the the modern war gaming the way it is is because i was playing ameritrash games with with people well imagine playing with other people um had a lot of fun. And then when I moved down here, you know, life kept me busy for a while with the move and all that. And then my new, my job that I started. And then I ended up finding, and, I, and I've been asking for like, what was the first game for me? Cause I'm a newer war gamer, right? I've only been playing war games, really like the type of war games we're talking about, right? I've been playing Risk back in the day when I was a child, but that doesn't count. Does doesn't count. Uh, my first real modern sort of conflict simulation, right? Instead of just a game was maybe um, Memoir 44. And I think you could argue, I guess, if that's a really a simulation, really not. Um, but really, once I got Memoir 44, some of like the hexes, it just picked up with me. And I just was like, this is cool. I like this movement style. I like this, what it can do. Um, which also, by the way, is a topic for today. Um, today's show, Hex Encounter, War Games, and Hex Encounter playing them solitaire. And Hex Encounter when you're a YouTuber, hashtag YouTube problems or YouTuber problems, which we'll, we'll cover all that. Um, but anyway, I played, you know, I don't even know the games, just played a whole bunch of them, loved them. Um, when I moved down here, starting into war gaming, memoir 44 picked up, I don't know, some smaller hex encounter. Remember, uh, invaders from dimension X was one of my first ones from Herman Lutman, tiny battle publishing, which I just did a video recently, um, or showed off some, uh, some bourbon, but anyway, kind of got me into that, but I, I would like to get back into it. I played magic, um, Recently, some of the some of the guys um, that I work with, I was playing Magic the Gathering with them. We were kind of getting into it from from scratch. I mean, I played Magic years and years ago. You know, I've gotten in back in in and out of it over the t over time. Um, but we were, I think you can see the Magic cards right above, whoop, 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 right up there, not on the bald head, but right above the bald head. Um, so me and some boys from uh, that I work with at the at the PD were playing Magic and. Uh, have a lot of fun with it. We haven't played lately. So it's really the war gaming and then life as we all have is really taking control of things. So, you know, yep, it's my, it's with Ikea, my new job. All right. Well, congratulations, Daniel. And I know that you're 
So you're working on some stuff with Wargaming as well. So besides playing them, maybe a design or something. So don't need any information right now. If you're working on something, keep it close to the close to the vest, close to the chest, right? But yes, to Tim. Oh no, still working. Oh, it's still working. Okay, I thought you had said you retired. Just an emergency management business now. Was doing active shooter training, rifle guard system there. Okay, all right. Well, you know, obviously we. I want to get into any current events per se, but uh, you know, very important, especially in my line of work, your line of work, right? It's very important that kind of thing. So, all right, introductions are over. I mean, you can still say hi. Um, let me take a look at my notes here. So, like today. I, I was going to, the topic, the name, I was going to have it say how I learned to stop worrying and love Hex Encounter Solitaire, but it was too long for my thumbnail. And I was like, that's just too much. So I just, you know, Hex Encounter Solo, but really that's what the topic will be today. Um, but before we dive into that, let's talk about a little bit of what I kind of have on the channel um, and then what's coming, what's coming up and then we'll, we'll dive into the topics there. So keep that in mind, Hex Encounter Solo, but save, save your comments for a little bit. So currently on the channel. Um, I just finished my series on Manstein's War, Manstein's War, Manstein's War. Sorry, I'm American from the Midwest. Decision in the West, 1940, from World at War Magazine, 84. Um, and that was a review copy sent by Decision Games. So thanks, Doc. Thanks, uh, Decision Games, for that. I did a complete series on it, right? So I did my recon, unbagging. Um, I did a tutorial partial playthrough. I played through most of turn one. And then my overview review. You know, overall, I really enjoyed it. Um, I described it as one of my better games, one of the better games I've played of 2022. So, um, you know, one of the things I looked at was as a war game, or excuse me, as a magazine war game, I hate to call it that because it's just a really good game overall. Um, you know, it could have been a box game, could have been a regular folio game. Either way, I don't think anyone would bat an eye if you, if you got a chance to play it. So definitely one to look at if the topic interests you. Again, Decision in the West, 1940, right? So it's covering the um, Western Front, the beginning of the war, World War II, um, fall of the Low Countries in France. I think it does a really good job simulating it in a, you know, what, what, it's, what it is. And I love the fact that the one of the things I really love, and there's a lot of good things, that's why I like the game. Um, but the, the hexes are really big. And so the hexes, the counters are, you know, normal size, 5 8 inch maybe. Um, but since the hexes are super big, they you can literally put side by side, I think you can put... If you figure just right, you can put either like three different stacks or four different stacks all within one hex and actually fit within the hex. It's really nice. I really like that. So um, as for upcoming games, can I'll get to you in a second here. Um, let me do my upcoming games and I'll get to any questions that pop up. So obviously um, you guys can see back here and then you had seen it. Uh, I had the box up. I didn't put the box up today. You know, I like to put little boxes up as all well. teasers and just or just have something in the background besides all my junk everywhere. Um, but I swear most of my house is actually put together really well. I keep it really well organized, clean. Um, but my gaming room definitely needs to probably go through and for me to organize. It's also why I'm selling a ton of games They're back here. I don't, I'm not advertising on my channel though. So, um, but over on the ConSim Facebook group, I'm selling a bunch of, a bunch of, a bunch of games. So uh, anyway, for upcoming, so obviously, uh, most fearful sacrifice from Herman Lutman and, um, flying pig games sent to me by Herman Lutman. Uh, thank you, sir. Um, checking that one out. I'm doing the, what I'm going to do. So I already did, I filmed the unboxing, which will be going up today, Sunday. So probably Tuesday. And so in two days, and then I will go ahead and Einstein. That's what I thought. I mean, give or take, right? Um, so what I'll do is I have my unboxing already and it's like, it's going up Tuesday. Um, and I'm, I'm going to do probably four or more videos, probably four, um, with, this um for this game right so unboxing i'm going to do a like separate tutorial video i think just really like teach the system not a playthrough just you know straight tutorial which i've done before um with blind sword system um through long street attacks i'd like a tutorial video where it was just just the tutorial not playthrough tutorial just tutorial um then i'm going to do a playthrough i'd like to do an entire game of um, one of the scenarios, I mean, probably the first scenario of Fearful Slaughter, or uh, Pig Slaughter, what, what is it? I forgot, forgot the name of it. Ugh. But um, probably do that, so that way you guys can see it in action as well. Um, and then obviously I'll have my overview review video. So it's so a plan for four videos on this. Should be coming out over the next couple weeks here. 
After that, I have a couple games that I just got in the mail. Um, Scream, Aim, Fire, Pacific. Yeah. Again, apologies for the glare. I have an open window right here. I have a little natural light. That's okay. And I'm learning how to show it off on camera a little bit. So, Scream, Aim, Fire, Pacific, um, designed by Jake Kirkpatrick and published by Tenabelle Publishing. First off, thank you to um, Mark Walker, Tiny Battle Publishing, for sending me this review copy. But what this this will be is, um, if you guys saw my videos on Scream and Fire, if you've heard of it, played it, it is a tactical scale um, hex encounter solitaire war game. Imagine. Actually, solitaire, hex encounter, tactical scale. First one was a lot of fun. Um, there's some randomness to it, but I, I really enjoyed it. Check out my videos on that. Um, some uh, One of the things I had mentioned when I did my, I think my review was I said, hey, you know what? You should have some expansions, have some extra versions. And I said Pacific would be an awesome one to have. And uh, obviously he listened to me and made a Pacific one. I'm sure you had that idea anyway for me, but maybe. Anyway, really enjoy it. Um, you can see a little bit of a little sneak, sneak preview. It's got those nice large counters, deck of cards. Woo! I can't wait. I'm excited for this one. Um, you know, a little lighter affair, easier to get to, on the table and play. You know, we're having these games that are heavier and bigger. They're a lot of fun, but sometimes you just want to get a little bit of a lighter game on the, on the table. So, um, and then after that, we'll be coming Save South Vietnam, solitaire game of South Vietnamese and U.S. War against the Viet Cong in North Vietnam, 1965 to question mark. Um, so this one is designed by Bob Faneuf and published by Fortress Games. Thank you, Bob and Fortress Games for sending me the review copy to take a look at. So um, this I covered for him this released around the same time as there's a it's Afgan, save Afghanistan or I know it's one where it's the Soviet, I mean, Soviet Union fighting in Afghanistan during the eighties. Sorry, sorry, Bob, I can't remember the name of that one, but there is eighth air force and 20th air force that he released previously, maybe last year or the year before last. And I covered eighth air force a bunch on my channel. I also have an unboxing or unbagging of the 20th air force as well. But um, eighth air force, I really, I enjoyed um, one of the few things I kind of had a problem with, I thought the artwork, it, it needed work, right? It just, it wasn't selling the game. It wasn't doing the gameplay justice. Um, I believe he's improved it with this one. And then possible, maybe, other edition, a second edition of those other games. We'll see. I don't want to spoil anything. I know he told me to not share certain things, so hopefully I was not, hopefully I'm allowed to say that. So, all right. Okay, let's get to some questions and stuff. Um, Ken, hey Wayne, did you ever play Al Nofi's Imperium Romanum? Imperium Romanum 3? Yes, um, sort of. So I did play it, so I had it. Um, I got the game. It's a it's a three-map game. Um, I really just play single-map games and smaller. Um, my game space isn't set up for larger, and frankly, I just I don't enjoy huge. That's not, not a thing I want to do when I'm sitting at home playing Solitaire. Maybe at like a convention, you know, see it being played, maybe get in on a game, help out with a game, something like that would be fun. But as for me alone, so I'm not I'm not saying like they shouldn't exist, right? Just for me playing solitaire, nah. So I played, I had that um three mapper, um, the newer one, right? You're talking about um from Decision Games. I set that up, played uh I think two different scenarios, had fun with it. I mean, it just but it was too much. There was only like one scenario that's only one map. And then there's some other scenarios that are like two maps. But then most of them are just the full three maps. Ah, man, that's too much for me. That's that's too much for me to do solitaire. So, but fun game overall, at least from my limited experience. Chris says, when I saw a video of uh, Manstein's War, it reminded me of Patton's first victory in relation to the hex to counter ratio size. Also, a decision this decision games. I said just deci decision game. No, I can't say decision games. Ah, DG. It's a DG product. That's what I'll do. Sometimes when you're talking and talking, just a word suddenly you just like can't say it. Have anyone else? Anyway, um, that's cool. Is is Patents for Victory also that same system, the boots system? So it's you know it's chip pull, right? They call it um, mar command markers. You're drawing command markers, but it's it's chip pull, right? Good system and great solitaire. I think it'd be a lot of fun two player as well. Tom, great to see you. Great to see you. Yeah, laughing, laughing out loud. Yeah, it's huge. Just curious. Yeah, it is. It's a big one. Um, so hopefully I answered your question kind of. Yeah, I played it a little bit. Not play like the full three map scenario. I just played a couple of the small, the one one map scenario. 
and then I played a two map scenario and I just was like, I can't commit to this game. It's it's surprisingly simple rule set though. So it's not overly complicated. It's just a monster game in size with the um, amount of maps and counters. So just be aware of that if you pick it up. But I know like, you know, I always talk about how much I love Roman, Roman times, Roman era, ancients era. And that's one reason I was like, when I saw it was being released, I'm like, I need this. And then I got it and I said, I don't actually need this or I don't need to play it. And I've also, I've gotten away from like hoard, hoarding, I should say hoarding, collecting. Um, apologies to all you collectors out there um, of, of war games. I've, you know, I sell, trade, give away, whatever. I'm not as, um, need to keep, you know, every little game I get anymore. So. Harold, howdy. Frank, Frankie, hey Wayne, about Irish freedom and the earth is weaving because of you. Hey, I, well, hopefully, hopefully you're enjoying them. Um, I know you're asking some questions um, for Irish freedom. Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm board game geek. Um, hopefully you enjoy them. I really, I really like Irish freedom. David Kershaw has a lot of good solitaire games, very dice heavy, very you know luck driven, but enjoyable. You know if you don't mind, if you don't mind chucking dice. You know if you got your wrist iced up, you know ooh, you're ready to go. Boom, boom. You can throw some dice, have some fun, um, and still enjoy yourself. You know, everything from, obviously, Irish Freedom is his newest one. Um, I've enjoyed previously World War Z USA. Um, I've enjoyed um, Solitaire Caesar, although I've never covered Solitaire Caesar on my channel. Um, the What's the Civil War one? I can't remember the Civil War one that he does. Um, I, I compare, it's not the same system at all. But I, I look at it kind of as the counterpoint to um, Jeff Davis, Confederacy of War from Arvid Madison. Um, that one is more simulation, heavier, stage of siege style. Um, the Confederate Rebellion. And now when you, but so Jeff Davis obviously plays the Confederacy. Um, in the Confederate Rebellion from um, from David Kershaw, he plays the Union and, you know, suppressing the rebellion. So I think it's cool, right? Like a good counterpoint. Again, not the same system at all, but. And that's okay. That's actually good, right? You have different systems, so different different um, driving and everything like that. So, Carol asks, Wayne, do you do this every Sunday? Well, I've started doing it every Sunday. Um, I think this is the fourth or fifth show. So, one month anniversary. Is it today? Um, really started to. So, my plan is to do it every Sunday as long as it makes sense um, for my schedule. You know, if I have to switch it up, you know, I do my line of work. We rotating schedules sometimes. Um, we shift bid on shifts and then we change when we're working um, overnight, day shift, second shift. So we'll see right now work Sunday works great. I expect it to work great for the future as well. I don't expect that to change though. So hopefully Sunday, 1200 hours, central standard time, noon, my time here in Southwest Missouri. You didn't mention EA Kharkov there behind you. Did you already do some vids about it? EA Kharkov. Hmm. Oh, over there. Hmm. Oh, good eye. Chris, no, it is not. It was an Eric Harvey um, game. Also, a very neat combat system. Okay. Wish there were other games that use it. Fantastic game and silly affordable. Yeah, a lot of these games, um, especially the magazine games, you know, they're released at a price, a certain price point that DG sets. And then, you know, if it's popular, it sells out. And suddenly a magazine game is going for $150 on eBay and it's, or Board Game Geek Marketplace. And it's like, what the hell? Or it will. Um, or suddenly it'll, it'll be, I guess, I don't know if they made more. They, I assume they make the same amount. I assume they print the same amount every month. And it's the complete conjecture on my part, by the way, I am sent review copies by DG, but I do not know anything about their business. Um, I assume they print a set amount each month. Right. And so if a game sells out, it's going to obviously be priced in the second market according the secondary market accordingly. But if they don't sell it, I feel like maybe it's not a hot seller that suddenly you'll see it places for kind of cheap and so you can end up with getting like a newer magazine war game for 15 bucks 20 bucks in some places so uh, i don't know if that's kind of what you're talking about but i know eric R. harvey i enjoy um the last one i think that he did is a fire and movement system that i played that's just something i'm forgetting was the forgotten pacific battles excuse me um the forgotten pacific battles um which is a solitaire game he uses again fire and movement system very simple solitaire system really it's the it controls the japanese defenders you know, obviously Pacific Theater, World War II, you know, you're the Americans attacking the Japanese defenders controlled by the system. And it covers some of the smaller island battles. There's a couple larger-ish ones. Um, maybe what, I think maybe Tinian and Guam. 
Um, then it has a bunch of smaller ones. I really like that system. I covered um, some videos earlier in my channel, I want to say. It's probably a few years ago now. Ranky, enjoying both very much. So yeah, thank you. Awesome. Glad to hear it. What are your favorite game series? Vince, that's the games that are sure common mechanics. Fine. Defense, coin, undaunted, standard combat series. Ooh, that's a great question, Vince. Great question. And I just see there's a couple more. We'll get, we'll get right to them. Around he said Z like a Canadian. Z. Well, that's the game. It's World War Z. It's 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 called World War Z. I was forced to. I don't want to do it. I want to say Z like proper, you know, American English. That's how we talk here. But the game is World War Z, so I have to say that. Damn you, David Kershaw. Because he's Irish, isn't he? Does he live in Ireland? Maybe he's not Irish, but he lives in Ireland. Maybe. I'm guessing. All right, let's go back to Vince here before we jump forward. Uh, what do you think of game series? So I would say, um, you know, looking at maybe non-solitaire specific, right? So just general standard combat series, I think is my favorite. Um, I don't like the monster ones and, and not because I don't, they're not, they're not because they're bad, but because as I already said, I play one mappers and smaller, but there's something about a syst a, a really like simple system like S, um, SCS. And by the way, there's one more I'm going to say after this, because you guys know it's coming. But I figured to do uh, standard combat series first. Some, you know, especially more the modern stuff, right? Uh, modern, you know, modern system, modern games, modern themes, topics, etc. And I feel like you get enough Chrome and enough simulation to go with it that you can actually get by with what? What is it? Like a six or seven page series rule book, and then a game usually will have two or three pages. It's usually looking at about ten pages of rules, approximately. Um, and you can cover, you know, a lot of World War II stuff, obviously, but. You can cover all kinds of things. I really enjoy it. Super easy to learn, super easy to play. Again, one of the few Hex Encounter style game systems that I really enjoy Solitaire. Um, the other one for a favorite game series that is um, not solo specific is obviously Great Battles of History. You guys know that. I've talked about it. I think every week I come up with a way to talk about Great Battles of History, but um, I do use the simple Great Battles of History rule set, second edition. But I love it. Love ancient com ancients combat. I love just GBOH. I mean, you know, the I love how all the unit counters have all the different artwork for them. There's all the different types of units. Just the way the hexes work. Hexes work with the battle system. You know, very I don't know realistic as far as we know and I know in you know 2022, right? How were how were battles fought 2,000 years ago? I don't know. Someone who maybe was there someone whose uncle was there wrote something that was trans you know in latin that was then translated to greek which then translated to english you know 800 years later 2000 years later now we're reading it so maybe we know how it works maybe not but simply put love it now getting to um solitaire um for system wise and by the way there's so many other great systems and games i could mention <sighs> Okay, actually, I'll, bring, I'll say one more because I, I hate to leave it out because you guys know I love it. Blind Swords, American Civil War. Absolutely love that Hex Encounter, Chip Pull. So I imagine it works great two-player, but I love it Solitaire as well, even though it is a two-player system. Um, you know, Herman Lutman, the evil genius himself, designed a hell of an American Civil War system. So it's now, there's, what, six or seven games out, and there's, there's like six more coming. So good system. It's going to have good legs. It does have good legs. Now let's get to Solitaire. Um, Solitaire. Probably, so I love the Leader series from DVG. Um, I've covered a number of Leader games on my channel, covered them, you know, more or less, depending, you know, Zero Leader. Was Zero Leader the last one that that I covered that was released? I think so. Zero Leader was the last one released, right? Yeah, because they just did the, um, i trying to think. I'm sorry, guys. I'm just thinking of, like, what I've covered on my channel specifically, because there's, Leader Series was one that I had really before, and I got into before I started um, doing YouTube videos. So then, I mean, I played them, and I have a couple like that games where I was like, hey, I, I used to play them a bunch, and still do occasionally. Warfighter, I actually will play Warfighter, although it's not my favorite series. I like it. I just, I struggle with the bloat, the table bloat. It starts taking up too much, too much table space. Like, I don't like, again, you know, guys are like one map or smaller. Well, Warfighter, you set that mat, the mat out, and it doesn't even actually hold everything on the mat, and the mat's already like full. It's, it starts taking up too much space for me. It gets, I get a little sick of that. But leader series in general, whatever you want to talk about, Corsair leader, hey, they fixed it up a bunch. It works great for me. Zero leader was fantastic. Um, you know, great job. Chuck Secret on that one. 
Um, we could look at talk about. Um, I know we have. There's new ones coming. I enjoyed Sherman Leader um, a lot. Actually, I really like that one. Some more of the like you know the leader series with the areas, more of the air ones, right? Like talk about um, Corsair Leader, um, Zero Leader, and then there is you know the more like hex actual like hex ones right with the set the terrain up and everything like that so then those are going to be more like sherman leader I, I really like those so leader leader series is fantastic um value defense is good um I'm undaunted i have i've not played um coin i haven't played i not particularly interested in most of the coin game themes um, i'm a theme driven guy right I don't just want to play a game with a random theme. You know, that's probably why I don't usually love Euro games because I need a theme that's tied into the mechanics and it's all together. And it's a theme I'm interested in, right? Um, something like coin, most of the games, not all of them, because I know there's ones that are, are on things I probably am very interested in, but most of the ones I've seen, you know, when it's talking about these, you know, rebellion in South America or Central America or Cuba, right? I, I don't, I'm not interested in that from a history standpoint. Um, there's so much history that I'm interested in. That I just don't have time for things that I'm not, I don't immediately get into right away. Now, it's not to say that I would never be interested in them or I don't change my mind sometimes or I don't learn about, start learning about things. Um, I know there was a time where I didn't really care about the American Civil War. I, I was like, okay, you know, it's, Americans fought each other, you know, it happened a long time ago. I don't know anything about it. I don't, you know, I don't know anyone who was in it. So what do I care? Oh, wait, you know, you, you watch Ken Burns' documentary, you're hooked, right? Like that's like the way to get you into it. So if Ken Burns has a documentary on something, and you watch it, you're going to now be interested in it. So, Whew, there's and there's a lot more to talk about, but we'll uh, I'll start. I'll move along a little bit here because there's a lot of a lot of comments from people. Um, so Daniel asked, "Do you think Hex Encounter is a solitaire friendly system generally, or is better a purely solitaire system for Hex Encounter games, if possibly developed?" So I think that we make do. I think that we as war gamers kid ourselves a little bit by making do with with Hex Encounter games and saying. I play both sides and it's totally fine. I think we're kidding ourselves a little bit. Now, some games, Hex Encounter games, are better solitaire than others, right? If it is a game that has hidden information, you know, decoy units and cards plays that go, goes along with it, you know, especially like events, right? Sort of um, call them like um, instant style cards, right? A card where you do something and your opponent would then play that card in response. So it's a response, right? It, Oh boy, that's tough to do solitaire and actually be fun to me. Everyone's different, of course, talking about my opinion and why I think the way I do. Um, I just feel like, you know, you're kidding yourself a little bit if you think that's like gaming it. I know people you'll see some, sometimes they'll say they consider that more of a study, right? A study of the game, a study of the history um, and less of gaming it. And I think that that's fair then. If you want to look at it that way and you think like, I just want to study this. I don't, I'm not gaming it because I can't by myself. That's fair. However, some solitaire games, I mean, I, I can really get into and can do them. Um, excuse me, Hex Encounter. Um, talk about Blind Swords, right? So I mentioned um, Chip Pull. I mean, so you set it up and it's both sides. There's no hidden information whatsoever, right? And then, well, okay, teeny, teeny bit. It's the events. You, you pick the events. You know, you'll pick key events. So there's random events for each side and then there's key events. You get to pick so many key events. Those are picked and, you know, placed secretly in the cup. Um, so that, okay, fine. That is a hidden information, but it's a very small part of it. And sometimes, by the way, when I play the blind swords, I just take all the events and just pick them randomly. Um, and I don't do any key events. I don't do any picked ones. I do all random each turn. That way it's totally uh, secret to me also. So I don't, I don't know what I'm drawing, which kind of, I think simulates the war anyway, especially civil war, right? The chaos, of that battlefield. But anyway, you know, it's chip pull driven, right? So you're drawing a chip, you're seeing what division or, you know, brigade, regiment you're activating okay what units are activating you don't know until you draw it and not only that especially blind swords it's chit pull both sides go into one cup so it's not just like for instance manstein's war which i just played and i just showed off where each side takes a turn so you don't you know which side's gonna go you just don't know which um set of units is gonna activate something like blind swords you don't know what's going to activate period or if it's just going to be a random event something you can control something you can't control do you have to make a decision is it just going to be something's going to roll something's going to happen you have no idea that level of chaos right i think really works well solitaire even more than something like 
Great Battles of History, as much as I hate to say that, because I simply adore Great Battles of History and adore the Ancients theme, um, it works even better. So Hex Encounter Solitaire friendly? It can be. Depends on the Hex Encounter game. Overall, you know, if it's an I go, you go with no hidden information, we make do, but it's not the same. It's not the same. Harold said, thanks. You should watch War Room on Saturday. Well, welcome. If you can come uh, stop by on Sundays, would love to see you. Love to see you. Ooh, we're up to over 30 people for a second there. Great to see everybody. Hopefully I'm getting to you guys. Sorry if I'm going off and ranting and raving. That's what I do, I guess, right? I am playing new to me, the Warstorm series Normandy, Pass to Hell, and Alone in the Storm. So that's the Warstorm series, right? Yeah, I haven't touched any of those. I've seen them. I've seen a little bit of info. I think there's a solitaire system involved, right? E. Karkov looks really good. So I'll play through a bit earlier. All right. Yeah. E. Karkov. Any action archive. Hmm. Is that around somewhere? Did you guys see that somewhere? Hmm. Back to Patton's first victory, which before I went on my rant, we talked about um, 20 minutes ago, an hour ago. You pick up Patton's first victory for $15 Ziploc, $30 US box with a computer game version included. Wow. Really? Okay. Vince says, great choices. Thank you, Vince. Thank you, Vince. I know they're great choices. They're mine. Frankie asks, how do you compare GBOH, Great Battles of History, to the Grass Crown? I have played and love Grass Crown. So I have a, I love Grass Crown. I have it on my um, channel, um, covered it a bunch, um, which those who don't know, Grass Crown from Hollenspiel, Emma Ball uh, Holland uh, from Hollenspiel, and it's um, Ancients, obviously Grass Crown, Roman, um, Roman Republic Award, right, for if you single-handedly saved a legion, you know, you've given a Grass Crown as the, as the, as the, uh, the like the medal, right, that was the award. Um, it's uh, sh Shields and Swords Ancient System, and it's not Hex Encounter, it's Square Encounter, Simply love it. Um, I know that in my review video, I compared it. To, I basically said, to me, it was the truly simple Great Battles of History, right? So I love Great Battles of History, but I play the simple Great Battles of History. Simple GBOH is still, not only is it still 16 pages of rules, but beyond that, you're still using the same maps, the same counters, which again, I simply love those counters. Like they look so cool, love the artwork, all that, all the different unit types, but you're still setting up, you know, possibly hundreds of counters. Ooh, that's a lot solitaire. That's a lot when you're just the one guy playing just to play by yourself. So grass crown, there's a couple dozen units per side. I mean, you know, a lot simpler rule set. It's like eight pages of rules instead of 16, something like that. Um, maybe more than eight, but it's not, it's not complex at all. So um, really enjoy it. Do you lose a little bit of the Chrome? Sure. You know, I suppose you lose some of the simulation aspect, right? It, the more you reduce the complexity, you're losing some simulation, right? But also what's, what's the simulation? What's the, you know, the, the, the curve, the line, right? Of one hand on one side, it's simulation and one side it's fun, like game, like where you got to meet in the middle, right? A little bit, um, unless you are literally, Hey, I want to simulate this. I'm going to have this in a museum and we're going to simulate something. Okay, sure. You're not looking to have fun, right? Just throwing dice. You want it to be, this is what historically happened and I can simulate it perfectly. Grass Crown does do a good job though, even with the simpler rule set, does do a, a good job of, um, and Amabel, she did a great job of including things in there, you know, to get that flavor that of the, you know, the Roman, Roman war machine as it changed, Roman army as it really changed from the, you know, citizen soldier farmer right of the early republic to late republic and i believe it, it ends with a really late republic late republic you know professional soldiers you know julius caesar as you know guys i love you know love julius caesar um you know marching his his loyal professional army men to battle and the kind of the differences between them does a pretty good job with that limited rule set so definitely recommend it if you like ancients and it works well solitaire you know it's not a solitaire game it's a two-player game but it works really well solitaire there's no hidden information or very limited. Um, and one thing I like that is that even for you, you mix up like your leaders you, and the elite units, you mix them up with, um, I believe they call them leaders in this one. It was elite units, now it's called leaders, I think. They have a star instead of just like the number or whatever. But you are the letter, excuse me, it's a star. Anyway, you mix them up secret and then you flip them over so you don't even know where they are. 
So it, it really works really well, right? That it's kind of like that chit draw aspect. Of, it's not chit draw, it's I go, you go. But it's that aspect of not knowing exactly what's going to happen next. Um, so if you're going to flip a unit over, is it going to be a leader? Is it going to be a regular guy? You don't know. James, still eagerly awaiting the arrival of my copy of Enemy Action Karkov. Enemy Action Karkov? Everyone's talking about this game. What are you guys talking about? Combat by Compass Games. I have not played that. Um, at one point, I requested a review copy. I didn't hear back from them. Um, but I would like to pick one up eventually to play. Just at games, 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 games. Piles of games everywhere. It, it's hard to keep up with all of them. But it is one I would like to cover one day. Howdy. Howdy, Jason. I played Blind Swords for the first time at GMT a couple months ago. Mets 1870. Cool system. You can see why it's popular. Yeah, very popular. Very popular with, I think, people playing two-player, face-to-face, over Vassal, and Solitaire. It's one of those systems that really works well pretty much any way you want to play it. Harold says, I have the multi siege. I like States of Siege. Yep. Um, I was supposed to be sent multi siege by Worthington. They, they sent me a lot of games. Um, I didn't get it, which is fine. I don't, I, again, I got so many freaking games to play. It's fine. But, um, so I haven't covered that one. Or do I have it? No, I don't think I have it. Let me check my little, little. No. Oh, Fire. Keep up the Fire was one I was sent that I haven't, I haven't covered yet. Maybe that's why. Maybe that's why they haven't sent me multi siege. Um, anyway. States of Siege, absolutely love the system. It's done so well with so many games. Um, I, you know, and hey, if you're someone, and I've seen a couple people, oh, States of Siege, here we go. Well, what do you mean? This isn't the States of Siege of the old days of like you just flip a card, you roll some dice, and that's all that happens. I mean, there are choices to be made. You cannot play Jeff Davis Confederacy at War from Arben Madison and tell me there aren't meaningful decisions to be made and there aren't, there isn't. A great job of the system done. I just butchered that sentence. The system does. You can't tell me it doesn't do a great job of simulating, you know, the Confederacy's struggle against the North, overwhelmed, um, having ports blockaded, strangling the economy, and then making sacrifices with the economy and production at home while also dealing with a, um, at least numerically and better equipped army on your front. So, great job on that so states of siege yeah the, the designers out there that are working with states of siege you know whether it's arba madison robert deleski they're turning out some great games frankie says what are your thoughts on world war ii tactical games i find most difficult to solo the opportunity fire but conflict for tradition takes care of this yeah opportunity fire is one that is kind of like when i talk about with the you know instant right an instant so like flipping a card of you know you move somewhere do something and suddenly you go ha i play this card on you well, if you're playing solo, I play this card on me. Ha ha. Well, why did you do that in the first place then? So, yeah, if you have opportunity fire, I mean, you know, it, it's tricky. What can you say? I mean, you know, that's why I think with especially tactical games that Hex Encounter, tactical specifically, where you have things like opportunity fire, I feel like they're really, really hard to solo. I feel like those do best with a solitaire system attached. So if that's um, Conflict of Heroes 3rd Edition, right, because that has the solo system, same thing with um, when you see Lock and Load Publishing with their Lock and Load Tactical and they have the solo system. Um, very, very interested and I'm very excited to get my hands on the um, Heroes of the Bitter Harvest when that comes out because it has a solo system, not just generic, although it's nice to have that, but it's tailored to that game. I'm interested in checking that one out and giving you guys my impressions. Just hoping that 1960 Romania Prelude of Blitzkrieg will be released this year. Who's releasing, or who's, uh, is that one coming from GMT? Daniel asks, I guess you mentioned several times, correct if I'm wrong, that you love Ancient Rome. What about a Field Commander Julius Caesar? Also, which Hex and Connor for Ancient Rome do you recommend most? Um, yes, Field Commander Julius Caesar, please sign me up. Absolutely, sign me up. I'm kind of, sort of, have an idea of a game um, that involves Julius Caesar and his conquest of Gaul, but I will probably not make it because I'm too busy and I probably can't make a good game anyway. I don't, I'm not really a game maker. I'm a game player and show her off. But yes, Field Commander Julius Caesar, please. I know that Vince, you're here, right? You're making uh, um, Field Commander Robbie Lee. Can't wait for that. And then there was rumor, rumor swirling through the interweb, the internet somewhere of a possible Field Commander Julius Caesar, maybe. Or is that you, Daniel? Someone's working on it, right? Tell me, someone is. Love to see it. Absolutely love to see it. 
Um, I feel like, you know, for such a, a – and I, I almost said that there's not a lot of games on him. I think I almost – I may have said that last week. Then I was going through GMTs, their, like, their email, and I went through the games they have coming up and their pipeline and all that. And I'm like, holy crap, there's like three games just on Julius Caesar – um, and related, of course, right? But different types of games. I'm like, okay, maybe there's maybe there's good coverage to him. But continue it. I like it. Which hex encounter for ancient Rome? I'm like, suppose I would just say one of the great battles of history, right? So hex encounter, um, tactical level, right? To getting into the battles, it's got to be great battles of history, right? They are the they're the gold standard. They're the one that's been around. There's so many scenarios, so many battles, whether it's SPQR. Um, Caesar Conquest of Gaul, Caesar the Civil Wars, which, right, Conquest of Gaul and Civil Wars are being combined and released into a deluxe edition of Great Battles of History, Julius Caesar. So I don't know if that's, the, I don't remember the exact name of it. Maybe I'll pull it up here. Let's go. Let's look at it quick. Um, I want to see. Is it Flux? Julius Caesar. Great battles of Caesar. Great battles of Julius Caesar Deluxe Edition. Oh baby, this one's coming soon, right? Oh yeah, look at that bad boy. Can't wait for that. He's almost got my hairline. Cannot wait. Absolutely. So, anyway, probably those. I mean, I know it's a lot to ask to learn Great Battles of History. It's a, it's an in depth system, but um. For X encounter, you you can't go wrong with it. Like you literally can't. So, all right, all right. All right I'm falling behind here. All right, let's run through some quick. Um, I hate to I to leave stuff on the table. I just don't want to leave you guys hanging. We ask me a question or say something, and then you know I don't respond for ten minutes. So I apologize. We're we're up around thirty people watching, which is a, which is a good number of people. So we got lots of stuff coming in. Charles, MMP, multi man publisher. Love standard combat series. That's who it comes from. Yep. Eight pages of specific rules. A handful of conflict specific rules. Wish hex setup number would be on the counters. Yeah. The setup is probably the worst part of standard combat series. Particularly when you have... Some of the games have a lot of counters. Again, I'm not even talking about the monster games. Clearly those do, right? Thousands of counters. 2,000 counters in, what, day of days? It's like 2,000 counter game. Um, I'm thinking more of even uh, Baston, right? It's like... 200 counters it's still a lot to have on the map like at once i mean they're all on there baby like and that's probably the one downside of scs gets a little counter heavy for me but you know and and just set up takes forever it just takes forever and i i had a problem with um the third world the third world war one world war three whichever one it was called you guys don't know what it's called iron curtain i think um a lot of like you know alternate history style I had trouble with that one because the setup was insane. It was just like, like 600 counters on the map. It's like one map, but it had 600 counters on it. That's too many, man. That's too many. And at the time, I complained online on Board Game Geek. I was like, you know what happened? In my opinion, anyway, maybe I'm wrong, but it feels like the type of game that was designed and the setup was done and it was play tested. Which, if you watch the videos from the designers and stuff, you, you, you know this is true. This is how I know. I figured it out. Um, you use Vassal, which is cool, fine. Vassal for playtesting, all that you're playing with each other, so that you can do like not face to face, but you know, with an opponent type of thing, no problem. Um, but in Vassal, you do a setup or reset of the game, click. When you're playing it and you got your little fingers and you got to move all the counters, 600 counters in the right hex, that's a whole different story. So, the one downside of it. Sounds like me, too many games syndrome, yeah, too many games for sure. Um, I do a pretty good job of playing the ones I get, sort of, I guess. Um, but, you know, it's hard to keep up. Combat also has a very large footprint. Oh, cancel that one for me then. Thanks, Tom. Man, who knows? Maybe I won't, but yeah. That's the problem. I play computer games. Like, it takes away time or what? Um, I play on and off. I play, I mean, I have a gaming computer. I play computer games on and off. This depends. I got into... Um, I'll get into a game and I'll play it a ton. And then, so I played the new um, King's Bounty, King's Bounty 2 or 3, whichever one it was, um, the like 3D one with the strategy fighting. Really had a lot of fun with that one. Played that one a bunch, like 60 hours, two different campaigns. Uh, I know 60 hours is not a lot, but it's a lot for me for that type of game. And then I played Civilization 6 on and off. Um, 
we talked about it a little bit, I think, with when I interviewed uh, Devin from Lock and Load Publishing. So I played um, the Stellaris. He played it some thousands of hours or something. I played it like 300 hours, nothing compared to him. But then I'll play, I have an Xbox, um, Xbox Series X. So I do like to play play Call of Duty, although I get whooped by the kids on there. So I've kind of gone away from that a little bit. John, hi all, greetings from Belgium. Heavy rainfall here with flooding in places. Ooh, sorry to hear that. With plenty of games, how do you find time to play them all? That's the secret. You can't play them all. Just play the ones you want to play. And we've talked about this previously. It's what happens sometimes. I'll get a, I'll get a game, whether I buy it or it's sent to me, and I'll start playing it, and I'm like, uh, no thanks. And so that's why, although my reviews are very honest, um, and I include the negatives with the positives, and I explain everything, or as much as I can anyway, there are games that I've played that I probably would I would have had a negative review if I'd actually done the review. And I mentioned this last week. I have videos that are in my queue. Again, and I've also, as I mentioned, it's all tied together, I swear. Um, I have videos. So when I do my games, right, when I do my videos, I film a video. It, I upload it. And it, I don't just post it. It's not like I upload and post at the same go. I, I film it. I do the post editing. I upload it. And I schedule it out. Like right now, I have multiple videos scheduled now. Um, and then... If, so if I do an unboxing and I and then I start playing a game and I'm like, man, I'm just not having fun. And it may not be that it's a bad game. Maybe I'm just not having fun. And I simply, because this is a passion, you know, passion of mine and a hobby, and I'm not paid to do this. I don't have to do it, right? If I'm not having fun, I lose that passion real quick. And and if it's not a game, and a lot of my negative review games or overall negative, right, is a game that I actually had high expectations for. So I want to share the fact of why I'm disappointed in this game. Why Planes Ending Wars, man, that those rule books just ruined the experience for me, you know. Why, you know, I thought Devil Boats was gonna be a really cool narrative driven solitaire war game, and it turned out to be a spreadsheet with a bunch of numbers and no real rule book that taught you how to play the game, and it was just it's, it's a joke, and then immediately released a updated, corrected, whatever, 52 page rule book, because they combined the rule book and the chart book into one. So, like, as soon as you bought the game and you got it home and you looked at it, you could go on board game geek and it's like, by the way, here's an updated 52 page rule book to print out. What? How much ink costs? So, anyway, when I'm disappointed by those things, because I had high expectations to begin with, if I go into a game I don't really have expectations and I'm just not having fun, I won't even finish playing it. And you won't see the review, you won't see videos, and you won't even see the unboxing. Usually, I usually just give up on it entirely. So, that's how when it comes to playing them all, you can't play them all. I can't play them all. But I play the ones that I really am interested in playing. And then I go from there. Say to see, so where does the mission rank for you? Excellent, excellent. Um, I know that there was a lot of controversy with the game on Board Game Geek. I really enjoyed it. Um, you know, I I know that and this isn't I'm not I'm not trying to toot my own horn when I say this, but I'm I'm glad that it helped. When I did my review of the mission and my comments, I mentioned the fact that for the initial version of the mission that the all the boxes the holding boxes were kind of small for the the um, counters that went in them i know that the new mission the mission now releases with a, a larger map and i think that um michael kennedy we've had a good relationship of talking back and forth about games so that was review copy from him by the way the mission and so when i mentioned that to him he was like oh you know well maybe we can make the map bigger and they did that so i'm glad for that but good good game i don't i don't think i really i have it i'm like I haven't played it lately. I do have it on my shelf still, though. Chris says, good to read all the positive views about SCS. Picked up Rust Off 41 recently. I've not played it yet. That one's fun. Um, I did cover it a little bit on my channel, I believe, right? So that's a good one. Good one to play. Good one to get in the system with. You, Oscar, did you end up on your sales list? I got, excuse me, I got rid of that one. I sold it. Not a review copy, by the way. Um, again, I don't sell review copies. I will give them away, trade them for other games, but I don't sell review copies. That was one I bought myself. Um, I enjoyed it, but I, I sold it. First of all, I, I realized I wasn't going to play it at that point. And secondly, I did hear there was maybe another edition coming with a mounted map, which I'd rather have the updated version. I don't always need an updated version of a game, but for that one, I was like, yeah, I would rather have that. Ah, I'm way behind in the comments. Vince says, yeah, someone is working on Field Commander Caesar. Wink. Gallic Wars. I heard with a ton of expansions thereafter, of course. Of course, Vince. I'd love to see I'd love to see it though. 
Frankie asks, which Blind Swords game do you recommend to start with? For me, smaller map and lower counter density is always key. Yeah. I'll say this. Because of the way the Blind Swords works with the battles, there's usually scenarios. And within those scenarios, you'll have, you know, starting off, say the first scenario will be super simple. It'll be literally five units to a side, maybe. And so in my mind, instead of looking at it, it has to be a small one, right? So instead of saying it should be Thunder in the Ozarks, um, or, you know, which is like, what, a one mapper? Or like a small one mapper. It may be been back when they made them. They didn't have full maps. It's actually two together or something. Something weird like that. Um, or Stonewall Sword, right? I think you can go with Long Street Attacks. You can go with, um, you can go with um, Thunder at Dawn. You can go with, um, you know, I don't, I don't know, you know, Kernstown, right? go actually yeah that's probably a good one you know shenandoah valley battles um because you have those scenarios that are a lot smaller and so you just start and that's what i recommend don't get overwhelmed by everything don't try to set up the big campaign if you're learning the game don't set up the big battle set up the small one that's what it's for set up the one where there's five five units to a side and learn that way um i don't think thunder dawn has a smaller scenario um, I only played the main game because I did a lot of playtesting with it, but I only played the main one. Didn't really mess around with smaller scenarios. That's more of Claude, his design when he was doing it. So I, I don't know how many smaller scenarios there are. So that one may not be a good one for the first one, but even something like Long Short Attacks, Kernstown, you can get, um, you can play smaller scenarios to learn the system. So I'd say pick the battle that interests you the most. Yep. New Caesar box from GMT looks sweet. Which is excellent ancient tactical battle game system. Kilroy was here. Robert, good to see you, my friend. Bill Commander Robert E. Lee first, though. Looking forward to events. Absolutely. Let's knock that one out. Get it done. Buy these GMT classics now in case no reprints in the future. I mean, maybe, you know. I know that they're starting to do a little better job. Charles says, uh, Avalon Hill, Caesar, at Alicia. So there, I've never played that. Again, I'm a little bit of a younger, not young, but younger, newer. How about that? War gamer. So I've never played really any of the Avalon Hill games. <gasps> I know. Um, but I can speak to the, there's an Alicia game, Last Stand of the Gauls. Alicia, Last Stand of the Gauls, published in Strategy and Tactics magazine. That is, ding, ding, Chip Bowl, Hex Encounter, Chip Bowl. Love it. Absolutely love it. I covered it on my channel. Do not know which magazine it was in. Daniel, it was not. Not me, about Phil Commander Julius Caesar, but also heard those rumors. I wanted to get your opinion on them. Absolutely. Cannot wait for that. Harold says, I retire next year and then play all these games. Love it. Love it. Can't wait. Good for you, man. Good for you. James says, I retired two years ago. I've been playing games every day since then. It is awesome. Jealous. Many people are now jealous of you. One year from three weeks. Getting there. You know what topic will be for next Sunday chat live? No, Daniel, I don't know. We're just doing this one. What do you want? What do you want me to talk about next week? You guys got ideas for a topic? I'm always open. Um, you know, tell me here, post in the comments. Probably the best thing after the fact, right? Looking about 100 counters, Normandy 44, turn three. Oh, it's a lot of counters for one turn. Handful of games take off the shelf, open the box, close the box, put it away, so I have nothing else to play. Yeah. We're going to purchase the Tannenberg game for Steam, but not to play. Just want to wander around the landscape and see the fortress of, oh, I cannot pronounce that, Zemsel, and get a feel for the area. Well, finding games in Europe, I would have a look at Hexasim Sim and UGG. Charles agrees. Rostov 40, 41 is a good starting point for standard combat series. Absolutely. Bob, good to see you. Good to see you in the chat. Bob was is, is the was was is the designer of Eighth Air Force, Twentieth Air Force. Again, I covered Eighth Air Force a bunch on my channel, and he sent me um, save South Vietnam. So we will be covering that um, after a most fearful sacrifice from Herman Lutman, and then the for those who weren't here at the very beginning, the um, Scream Aim Fire Pacific. And I've not mastered the art of showing them off on the reverse.
camera. It feels like reverse. I don't know. All right, anyway, so Bob says, I think White Tribe was made by the same guys who made the mission. Yep. Uh, Arvin Madison and then um, was Wes Ernie involved with White Tribe as well? Both of those are really fun games to have and have tiny, tiny game boards. Don't ask me why. Yeah, I think the new one, like I said, I'm pretty sure the new um, the mission board is a lot bigger, I think. That's, I think that that's, was part of, again, I mentioned before, my my uh, commentary on the board saying eh, it's a little too small. Um, I believe Michael Kennedy made it a larger one for the um, the next sort of, not edition, because it's, it's print and play, right? It's by Blue Panther. They print with Blue Panther. So it's, it's not print and play. It's um, print on demand, excuse me, print on demand. So I think they were able to fix, fix that pretty quick. White Tribe definitely has a small game board. Not too bad, though, just because the areas are a little larger, right? Because it's not like little boxes everywhere. It's actually like areas. So not too bad. Chris, Chris, for other, try the free game called Enlisted. Eh, I played it a little bit. I know you're talking to Chris, but I played it a little bit. Uh, eh, you know, I'm not for me. Battlefield 2042. Ooh, I played that and I returned it. Tom says, Wayne, gotta go. Baseball for my son. Peace and blessings for Vern. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. He has a surgery on Monday, tomorrow, but I know it's going to go well. Everything's going to go great. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tom. Absolutely appreciate it. Chris says, a good way to pronounce it is Shemish. Shemish? So wait. Hang on. Let me go back up. Find it. I don't know if I'll be able to find it. A lot of comments today. A lot of people watching. 30-some people watching. Fantastic. Love to see you guys for sure. Love to have you here. I'm going to keep going past it. Can't find it. I give up. I give up. So just go back to what Daniel said um, for next Sunday. If you guys have a particular thing you'd, you'd like me to talk about, um, please, you know, you can you can comment now in the or in the you know in the chat. Um, you can save it for comment after the video, uh, or you can message me. I don't know Facebook, Board Game Geek. Email me. My email is in uh, the info section on all my videos, except um, I don't do it in my videos here. My my live ones, but all right. Um, ooh, Frankie. Next Sunday, maybe area impulse games. Ooh, um, there's a, there's some good ones, obviously, and some not as enjoyable ones, not as good ones, at least in my opinion. Um, the re most recent one, I savaged my video, my review, I savaged um, from Against the Odds magazine. Right, is the uh, Chancellorsville. 1863 one did not enjoy that one some of the just the rule book was really bad rule book wasn't good again comes back to the rule book for me right when uh, someone asked last week kind of what's the main thing that really would ruin a game for you rule book immediate answer rule book look carefully and you can see shemish yeah let me look really closely and maybe i'll see it But yeah, maybe. Um, I'll say that my experience, I feel like there's not a lot of them though, right? I mean, at least Hex, I mean, Hex Encounter games, we barely talk about any of them. There's still so many to talk about. Um, Eerie Impulse though. I mean, there's a good number of them. I've played some. i played my share. Primarily, well, probably not even my share, honestly. Because I've really only played um, Michael Ranella's Eerie Impulse. So I'm a little bit more limited, you know, and I can speak to say some of his are great, some of his are not. And by the way, the ones that are not, like the new Chancellorsville from Against House Magazine, I know why it's not, and it's not his fault. I Because I know the team that worked on the game, that worked on developing and then wrote the rule book and the developer and those types of people. And I know who they are and I know their games that, and when, poor rule books, poor, poorly developed, poor rule books, poor for new players, simply put. And they're very much in the mindset of once they have something designed a certain way, that's it. Like this is the way it is. And they have their play testers. This problem is they also have very um, insular play testers, right? That play a game with all their games. So like they play each of their games and it's always, Oh, this is so great. Everything is great, man. You need some criticism in your life. You need something to correct. So you can correct what you're not doing. Well, you know, none of us wants to hear it. I don't want to hear it either. When someone's like, Hey, you didn't do this. I don't want to hear it. 
But the, actually what I usually do, and I'm not perfect, but usually what I do is I then take that feedback and then next time I try to improve it. So, yeah, right. Illusion Games is some good World War II ones? Question mark. So are you, do you mean for Hex Encounter? So Chris, you, I mean, I would think, uh, so I don't know, Celis, right? Battle of the Bulge from them. Um, chip Pull. Chip Pull. So it's a Hex Encounter game, but it's Chip Pull. And absolutely adore that one. Um, they have a North African chip pull one uses the same system. I cannot remember the name of it. I have it. I feel like they sent it to me. Maybe I bought it. I don't know. Sometimes I lose track. Sorry. And it's over sitting over here. I've yet to play it. I'm um, yet to show it off on the channel or anything. Are you talking about the uh, area impulse? Oh, I got back to Hex Encounter. I'm talking about Hex Encounter this week, guys. Stay on topic. Jeez. So what did they, did they do? Area impulse? Oh well, duh, Michael Ranella. Yeah, that's what I was talking about with Michael. I mentioned Michael Ranella is that, yeah, of course, that I enjoy a lot of his. But yeah, it's Revolution Games. But we're not talking about that. We're talking about Hex Encounter. Jacob Bass Wayne. Been a while since I was down in Springfield. But any hobby shop selling war games that you could recommend in your area? I'm up in the Kansas City area. Nope. So there was Nameless City Comics and Games. He was an old ASLer, the owner of it, old ASL player, and he stocked some war games. And they went out of business. I remember we were there, me and my buddies. I said the some of my squad mates playing uh, Magic the Gathering together. Uh, it's sort of been maybe last year, last summer, something like that. And we were there. I think it was last summer. And we were there, and we we're playing. It was playing Magic, but he had war game stuff. Whatever, get together, play some Magic. They didn't really want to play war games. Um, and I asked about playing, some, buying some Magic cards from him, like new boxes or decks, packs, cards, anything. He's like, yeah, we just sell singles. I'm like, well, can I, you know, can I order some? Like, nah, you go, go to another store to order them. No, not a way to stay in business. And now they're out of business. So they, we have a couple uh, hobby game stores here. Um, Meta Games Unlimited is, is probably the largest, is the largest, but they don't have war games. And I've tried to order war games from them. Well, once I did, and they never came in. They never called me or anything. So I'm done with them. So unfortunately, no. The closest, um, and you said you're in Kansas City. Um. You know, for us, both of us is going to be a miniature market, right? In St. Louis, huge, huge online presence. And then they have so the miniature market. Um, or it was in St. Louis because that's where my son's in the hospital up in the NICU, St. Louis Children's Hospital. And we're driving, my wife, we're driving. And suddenly I'm like, holy crap, the big miniature market sign, big miniature market store. I'm like, wow, that's like, that's actually pretty cool. And they, they sell obviously a few war games, not war games specific, but they sell a lot of war games. So, well, guys, we're over an hour. I usually do around an hour 15. It's usually around we start kind of wrapping it up. So another 10 minutes. Oh, it's an hour eight. So about 10 minutes, a little bit less. Any last questions, you guys? Questions, comments, concerns? We've talked about Hex Encounter games. Oh, hmm. One thing I was going to mention, um, talk about Hex Encounter games. I want to mention them for a YouTuber. And this is definitely hashtag YouTuber problems. Trust me. This is not, this is not like you. All you guys there are probably going to be like, what are you talking about, Wayne? But what I want to mention this and in, in, in one of my videos is that when you are, it's hard to film Hex Encounter War Games and make a really good impression, I think. Um, I think the only way, the main way to get it done is you almost just like you show the setup, you talk about it, turn the camera off, you play, turn the camera back on, you talk about it some more, et cetera, right? You kind of update people as you go. But the actual like playing while filming at the same time, it's really hard with Hex Encounter games, guys. I've tried it. I get more. I get comments. People, hey, can we see some more Hex Encounter games? Uh, yes. But I've also, for instance, I did a hour and a half video because Hex Encounter games also, by the way, usually take a long time to play. That's just the nature of the beast, right? It's not a set limited um, gameplay, right? It's not, hey, draw this card, add your hand, play from three cards make an action, you know, you run through a quick sequence play, you're done. Hex Encounter, you write, is more of a sandbox style. Okay, I have 50 counters I can move. In fact, I have to move all of them during my turn. Maybe not, right? It depends on the game. Maybe more, maybe less. Um, there's just kind of all these different things to do, and then you're you know, you're doing all the combat, adding combat factors, terrain, checking column shifts. Falling asleep right now, just describing it to you guys. Not that I don't enjoy it, I do, but I think playing it on video is really hard. Um, or showing it on video, right, and showing it off to you guys. So um, that's why you don't see a whole lot of Hex Encounter games on my 
um, video channel and my channel specifically, just because I don't feel like it's a good product for you guys to watch. It's a good video, right? I want you guys to be entertained and educated. Um, that's what my, my videos I try to do, right? Main two things are educate, especially because like I do, I do my unboxings where I talk about them and I show things off. I do my tutorials, right? And usually a playthrough, um, and then my overview and review. So I want to educate, but I also want to, want you guys to be entertained. I want you guys to have fun watching them. I try to keep my unboxings to 10 minutes. I try to keep my overview and reviews to 20. I try to, okay, the tutorial playthroughs, they could be anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour. Um, I think I did an hour and a half video on an old Hex Encounter game a couple years back. And I remember I had a couple comments on like, it was slow and boring. And, like watching me move counters was really boring to them. That's part of it though. If you're going to show the gameplay right now, that's where the, the sort of the, the difference is, is if you um, don't show the gameplay, right? So you just show the, the recaps, right? You give little briefings, right? So you describe what's on the map, what you're going to do. Here's the units, maybe show a couple things, you pause the video, and then when you come back, you record again, you've you've played a bit, you've played the turn, you played half the turn, whatever. That's one way to do it. Um, I don't I don't really do that a whole lot. That's just not really my style, but I know some people do that. I've also seen um, YouTube, you know, war gamers that and I'm not calling anyone out specifically, but they set up a camera and they point it towards like a hex encounter map from a weird angle, and you can't read any of them, and they'll just like play some, and it's like you can't see anything. Like, how exciting is that? You can't even read the map. You can't read the counters. It's just, to me, that's lame. To me, that's not fun. It's not exciting. I mean, I'm not saying it's not valuable to somebody, but for me, that's not what a product I want to put out. Some videos I want to put out. So. He sent you the new, new Heroes of the Bitter Harvest with the new Soul Assistant, Lock of Publishing. Hey, I assume, uh, David, how you doing? Absolutely. I'm going to take a look at it. We talked about it a little bit earlier, David. Um, talked about the... Um, with solitaire games with there were some questions of um hex encounter tactical and with opportunity fire things like that how well do they work solo generally speaking they don't i said the the when you try to play two-handed right so hex encounter games without hidden information you can play it you're kind of kidding yourself a little bit if you think it's fully the same game but you can do it but as soon as you get those like secret things like or opportunity fire things like that really hard it's you're really just kind of pushing counters around unless there is an actual AI solitaire system involved, and then it can make a big difference. Doing great, sir. Welcome, welcome. Glad to see you. Glad to see you. Um, John John asks, how many hours do you, a day do you play war games on average? Ooh. Um, so the way I do it, so this is my definitely my primary hobby of mine, right? So I, I work full-time job. Um, Spend time with the wife, travel up to St. Louis when I can, you know, spend time with my son. Um, he's hopefully be coming home next month. We'll see. No promises yet, but we'll see. Um, but what I do, generally speaking, is when I have my days off and I, you know, I work longer shifts, uh, most people in my career do. Um, and so I am able to have generally three days off um, a week instead of two. And that allows me to say have, you know, a day where I can spend a good chunk of that day playing war games. Um, and then my other two days off, usually I can fit in a couple hours each. So the way I look at it is, um, I think on Facebook, there's a poll on Facebook. I think I, I averaged or selected the like 12 to 20 hour a week. I want to say, because if I play eight hours, one day, and then two, two, four, yeah, probably closer to 12, I guess, than 20. So 12, go with 12. So 12 hours a week on war games. So, you know, again, I'm police officer, not mathematician. So I don't know, I average that out. How many hours a day is that? I don't play per day though. Like I said, because my days that I work, I work long shifts and I'm mentally tired at the end, sometimes physically, sometimes not. I'm mentally exhausted at the end of my work day. Like most of us are right. Who work. Um, I don't particularly usually want to sit down and play a complicated war game by myself. Um, I just don't enjoy it. Right. I don't, it just not getting into the theme from, sitting there and I'm, you know, it's been a long day. I got a lot of my mind. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm probably not. But day off, like today, I uh, I played some this morning of a most fearful sacrifice. Although actually I um, did play a ton because I'm working on an updated sequence of play for myself. There's one that someone put, you can see it right there. Someone put on Board Game Geek um, and it, it's it's good. It's just not, it's not perfect for me. So I'm making my own, which I usually do for most games anyway. I should just make my own from the beginning with this. Um, but 
and I've talked about this four of my games, you can see kind of the setup here. I'll have anywhere from three, four, five, six uh, sheets of, you know, player aids, sequence of plays, et cetera, basically player aid style sheets, right, set up back here. Um, so that way when I'm filming, I can, well, when I'm playing, I can just play easier, right? I'm not constantly flipping through the rule book. And second, when I'm filming, I have a lot of stuff to reference. So hopefully that way when I do my videos, they're, you know, they're quick, they're knowledgeable. I don't have to sit there, um, let me check this, um, you know, I try to pause when I do, but sometimes it happens. So Vince says, your presentation and honesty is excellent. Thank you, Vince. I really appreciate that. I do my best. I'm not perfect, but I do my best. So, all right. Any final questions, you guys? Steve, you're late. We're wrapping up. Final question, Steve. Get it out quick. Get out quick. I got I got stuff to do. I got a most fearful sacrifice to play. So, like I said to at the beginning of the video, I uh, I was almost late because I got a workout in and then showered and then I was like I gotta hurry up and do this video. But I'm excited. I gotta finish up finish up my sequence of play. I think it's just about done um, for. And I'm not just giving a thumbs up. I'm pointing back here. Um, that I'm going to get um, some most fearful sacrifice. That'll be next coming up on my channel. Um, the unboxing is already filmed. Obviously the video, the game is up here and I'll be playing it and doing videos on this multiple videos. So check on a great week of gaming, Christopher, same to you, my friend, everyone else as well, whatever games you want to play, have fun with them. Don't listen. Don't who cares what I say. If you like it, have fun with it, baby. If you got devil boats on your table. Go ahead, enjoy it. You know, obviously you you like spreadsheets. Are your favorite hobby? Your hobby is spreadsheets. No apologies necessary, Steve. No apologies. Not from you. Not from you, my my friend. Sorry. Do you plan on revisiting any titles you previously reviewed, or just stick with new stuff? So, like, you mean um, doing like playthrough videos or things like that? It'll be mostly new stuff. But in full honesty, right? Full honesty disclosure. It'll be mostly new stuff. Um, just because of the fact that those are what get the most views for me. And those are also what I like to show off, right? I liked it. I liked that getting in that new game and not necessarily a new game in the sense of a new to me, although sometimes that's okay, but I like to get the new stuff, right? Cult of the new, maybe a little bit. I know guilty, guilty. Now I still play my older games. I play games that I don't show on the channel because it is so much work. It's fun, but it's a little bit of work. Um, um, it's, it's, it's a lot of work to film videos, right? And there's an aspect to the, while I enjoy it, it's a passion, it's a hobby. Sometimes I just want to play a game and you know, sometimes it's not a war game. I told you guys I've been playing the new hero quest with the app acting as the dungeon master. So that's been a lot of fun replaced like D and D for me, which I haven't played D and D in like eight years. Um, so for the most part, probably going to be just new stuff, Steve. I'm just probably not going to have a whole lot of the older stuff coming up, but it does happen, right? I did a video playthrough of a Corsair Leader mission recently um, while the last Air Leader Kickstarter was going um, from Chuck Siegert, uh, Stuka Leader. And then I did, excuse me, I did um, Invaders from Dimension X. I just did a playthrough on that of the running the gauntlet scenario, scenario number one. I was showing off the bourbon. Um, having a cocktail and just had some fun with it. I wanted, I was like, I was gonna have a cocktail and play. And I thought, you know what? I will film this one. So I will do some older ones, Steve, but for the most part, yeah, it's, it's just going to be new stuff for the most part. Probably nine out of 10 videos, right? It'll be a new, new instead of old. David's saying fearful is a great game. Make sure to get the larger play rate card or unreadable. Yeah. And I mentioned that in my unboxing, um, the season over here. Yeah. Let's see if we can, it, you guys are gonna be able to see it. It's gonna be so small. It's it's really small text. I'm sorry, guys. I know it's probably it's not really gonna look too good on the camera anyway, but it's just really small text. <laughs> like get, like look at this thing. Look at this CRT. I mean, I'm like holding it around the camera. Okay, it looks fine there, right? Now imagine you're like a normal person reading it back here. It's so like you're holding it at arm arm's length. Good. Try to read that. Good luck, right? I don't know why the text is so small. I mentioned that in my unboxing. You know me. So the game was sent by Herman Lutman. Appreciate that, my man. Um, evil genius himself, Herman Lutman. But I definitely commented and said, why, are the, why is the text so small? And I know that um, I saw online they were saying, um, Herman and Claude were saying, and again, great guys. You know, I worked with Claude when I was helping play test uh, Thunder Dawn. But 
And then when he had me running around Wilson's Creek battlefield, taking video, getting chiggers and stuff, getting all bit, bit pulling ticks off my legs later on. But, uh, you know, they said, you know, oh, we want to put more information on the cards. Like, yeah, but if it's that hard to read, it's not too hard for me to read. Um, thankfully I have good eyesight, but I can get why there's people online that are complaining. Um, you know, and some people of course are like fanboys and you guys know, I love blind swords, but there's fanboys I've seen also that are like, Oh my God, these things, no, they're perfect. I would never do anything otherwise. I, I don't know why anyone would complain. Well, I know why someone would complain. The text is tiny. It's like six point font. <laughs> so I know why you would complain. I can read them, but I know why you can complain. Oh, dog's barking. I think a dog wants me to wrap it up. So um, again, any final comments? I think we're going to wrap it up here. We are good. Great show, everybody. Well, I think it was a great show. You guys were great. I did okay. Thank you for stopping by, everybody. Say goodbye. See you guys. Have fun. Good gaming this week. Let me know if you have any ideas. Um, oh, and, you know, before you tune out, if you want to donate to the channel, I will have links in the video description for my Patreon, which is a monthly thing, or there's a PayPal link. You know, send me money for a cup of coffee or something like that or more energy drinks. Sure would appreciate it. But otherwise, thank you, everybody who showed up. Thank you, everybody who tuned in, who commented, who said anything, shared your thoughts, asked me questions. You guys got me talking. Keep me talking for a good hour, hour and a half. My throat's dry, throat's sore. Gonna drink some water because so I just energy drink. So, again, thank you, everybody. And uh, any comments, go ahead and share them in the uh, video comments after I close her up. So, but I think we're done here. So, until next time, later. <laughs>